Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel, it's Son of a Gun Gourmet. I thought with Easter coming up, this video would be a great opportunity to make a Sunday roast dinner with a little added twist. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and let's start cooking. The cut I'll be using for this roast is an eye of round. This is a very tough cut and not one you'd typically go with for a roast you'd plan on serving medium rare. But with the right kitchen tools, we'll be able to make this cut extremely tender and keep it a perfect medium rare. Before that though, we have to take off all the silver skin and excess fat, leaving only the fat cap on top. Because this cut has very little marbling, it doesn't lend itself well to braises or slow roasting. That's why for this roast, I'll be cooking it in the sous vide. Now that it's all cleaned up, we'll season it with salt, freshly cracked black pepper, and a bit of garlic powder. Don't be shy with your seasoning. This is a large cut of meat and you want that seasoning to carry throughout the whole thing. Over the long cooking time the sous vide provides, the salt should get all the way to the center of the roast, giving it great flavor and making it nice and tender. Next, we're going to place our seasoned roast into a vacuum seal bag. Add a few sprigs of rosemary and thyme for some extra flavor. Now we're going to seal it up to get it ready for the sous vide. I like to let it sit in the bag for a couple minutes to make sure it doesn't start to fill back up with air. If it does, either the bag has a hole in it or the seal didn't work and will need to be resealed. We want the temperature of our sous vide to be 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Set a timer for 31 hours and place the roast in the sous vide. When this timer has about two hours left on it, I'm gonna start preparing the rest of the meal. One thing that you absolutely need to have with a Sunday roast is Yorkshire pudding. Yorkie batter is an extremely easy recipe. All it is is equal parts egg, milk, and flour with a pinch of salt. Also, if you'd prefer, you can prepare the batter a day ahead of time and will turn out just fine. Start with your eggs in a mixing bowl, break the yolks, and just give it a quick whisk. Next, add your milk to the eggs and make sure they're fully mixed before adding your flour. I like to sift my flour into the batter to try to eliminate as many lumps as possible. Add a pinch of salt and then mix the flour in until the batter becomes smooth. If whisking the batter isn't working, you could switch to a hand blender or strain the batter. Yorkie batter tends to puff up better if you give it some time to chill in the fridge, so I'm gonna just keep it cool until I'm ready to use it. Next, we'll start getting the mashed potatoes ready. I'm just gonna peel and quarter a few Yukon Gold potatoes, put them in a pot, fill it with cold water and a pinch of salt. Next, I'm gonna peel my carrots and parsnips and put them into two separate pots. Cut each vegetable into large uniform pieces. You may notice that I'm not making that much veg and potatoes to go with such a big roast, and that's simply because this is dinner only for my wife and I, and we really don't wanna to have to eat enough sides to feed 10 people. Place the carrots into a pot of cold water with a pinch of salt and bring them up to a boil. And you're gonna do the exact same thing with the parsnips. The reason we start carrots and parsnips in cold water as opposed to something like green beans or broccoli which we quickly blanch in boiling water is because root vegetables are very dense and to make them soft, starting them in cold water will ensure they are evenly cooked as the water starts to boil. If we tried to blanch them in already boiling water, then the outside would cook long before the inside. Once the carrots and parsnips come up to a boil, you could take them off the heat and strain them. After they've been strained, you could just keep them off to the side and let them come down to room temperature naturally. 
While we wait for these potatoes to finish cooking, it's time to make the roux that we'll need for the gravy. Roux is equal parts fat and flour, and I only need a little bit for this amount of gravy, so it's 60 grams of butter and 60 grams of flour. Start by fully melting the butter, and then once it is, you can mix in the flour. For beef gravy, we want a dark roux. It will give extra color and it develops a nice toasted brown butter flavor that complements beef stock nicely. Cook the roux out on medium heat while constantly stirring it until it smells toasted. Transfer it to a ramekin or heat resistant container and let it cool down in the fridge. For the gravy, I'll be using two cups of my homemade beef stock. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below and we'll be adding to it half a cup of red wine as well as a couple sprigs of thyme and we'll let that come up to a simmer. While that's heating up, it looks like our potatoes are finally done to make our mash with. I'm just going to take those potatoes off the heat and strain them, then start heating up a cup of 35% cream with a quarter pound of butter. We'll let the cream simmer until the butter fully melts into it. While that's going on, we'll start to rice the potatoes. If you don't have a food mill, it's not a big deal. Just use a potato masher. I just like to rice the potatoes because it gives a lighter and smoother texture. And once all our potatoes have been milled, it's time to add in the hot cream and butter. If you really want to try to make your mashed potatoes phenomenal, try adding more ingredients into the cream and butter to infuse the flavor into it. Garlic, bay leaf, thyme, white peppercorn all work really well. Just make sure to strain them out when you add the cream. Season with a small pinch of nutmeg, salt, and freshly cracked black pepper. Or if you happen to have it, white pepper. Mix the mash just enough until everything's properly incorporated. Then I'm just going to transfer it back into the same pot that I cooked the cream in to keep it warm while I get everything else ready. Now that our gravy's at a simmer, it's time to finish it. Strain the thyme out and transfer it to a new pot. Next, add your dark roux and whisk it in thoroughly. To prevent a lumpy sauce, it's important that you're either adding cold roux to hot liquid or cold liquid to hot roux. Bring the gravy back up to a simmer and let it cook out for at least 5 minutes. Stir it periodically to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pot. And while I'm watching that, I'm going to bring a blanching pot up to a boil. Season your gravy to taste with salt and freshly ground black pepper, then leave it warm off to the side until you're ready to serve. Now I'm going to preheat my oven to 450 degrees. Once that water comes up to a boil, I'm just going to blanch a couple pieces of broccolini. I'm going to let them cook for about 30 seconds or until they're tender. Take them out and then cool them in an ice water bath. Now I'm going to start heating up my muffin tin for the Yorkies. And while I wait for that to heat up, I'm going to pan roast the vegetables. Add a bit of oil to a hot pan, then throw in your carrots and parsnips. Season them with salt and freshly cracked black pepper and let them get a bit of color. Then add a knob of butter and put the pan into the oven. Now that everything else is almost ready, it's time to start preparing the roast. Cut open the bag and make sure that you save all the juices and add them to the gravy. It will provide great flavor. Now I just need to pick off all the sprigs of rosemary and thyme and pat it dry. Once your vegetables have developed some nice color in the oven, take them out, put the broccolini in the pan, season it with salt and freshly cracked black pepper, and then toss them, put a lid on top, and keep them warm. Next, we'll get the Yorkies ready. 
Fill the muffin tin about a quarter of the way with vegetable oil and then put it back into the oven to get the oil nice and hot. Now that the oil is almost at smoking point, it's time to add the batter. Pour a quarter cup into each of the muffin tins. And as quickly as you can, put them back in the oven. Let them cook for 10 minutes at 450 degrees, then another 10 at 350. Rotating halfway through cooking. Once your Yorkies are out, set your oven to broil, let it heat up, and then put the roast in. You're only broiling it to sear the fat cap, so it shouldn't take any more than 5 to 10 minutes. And the less time it takes to get that sear, the better, because remember, your roast is already fully cooked. And once you've given it a bit of time to rest, it's time to get everything onto the plate. And this roast turned out absolutely perfect, medium rare and more tender than a far more expensive cut, like a strip loin or a tenderloin. So if you have a sous vide or have been looking for a reason to buy one, try out this recipe for your friends and family. I guarantee you it won't disappoint. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on cooking.